Good afternoon, I'm Dennis Galecki, and welcome to the 455th Imagine Greater Buffalo program and 77th virtual Imagine lecture hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Thanks so much for joining us today. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. We're going to start with our speakers shortly, but first, a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted during our speaker's presentation. If you have a question, please type it into the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. This program is being recorded. You'll be able to watch it again later on the Downtown Central Library's Facebook page and YouTube channels. And we hope you share the link with your friends and networks. Now, today is the fifth Tuesday of the month, happens four times a year, and uh, therefore its theme is the art of investing. It is also part of our Imagine Creating a Culture of Sustainability series that we began last summer and add to every uh, last Tuesday of the month. This series, uh, this sustainability series is co-sponsored by the Lipsy Buffalo Architecture Center and Erie County 200. Now, to our featured speakers, Michael Weiner and J.D. Hartman. Michael uh, is president and CEO of the United Way of Buffalo and Erie County. United Way's mission is to bring people, organizations, and resources together to create systematic community change. Michael leads the organization's efforts in raising and investing millions of dollars each year to address pressing local health and human service priorities in education, financial stability, and health and wellness. Michael Weiner formerly served as the commissioner of the Erie County Department of Social Services and has worked for the New York State Office of Mental Health, Erie County Medical Center, New York State Office. Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services and Catholic Charities of Western New York. He holds master's degrees in business administration and rehabilitation counseling from the State University of New York at Buffalo and is a clinical instructor for SUNY at Buffalo School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences Department of Psychiatry. Now, J.D. Hartman focuses on sustainable, responsible investing and provides forward-thinking financial strategies in line with client values as the founder and managing partner of Equitable Advisors, Signity Financial. He has worked in the financial industry for nearly 40 years. Much of this time was spent in New York City as the Senior Managing Director of the Wall Street Investment Bank, Leventhal & Company. In addition to his business responsibilities, J.D. is a community leader with subject matter expertise in cooperatively owned businesses. He is past chair of the Lexington Food Co-op and he is the current board chair of Urban Roots Cooperative Garden Center in the Five Points neighborhood of Buffalo. JD is also an active member of Sustainable and Responsible Investment Forum and the Western York Sustainable Business Roundtable. So it's a great pleasure to welcome Michael Weiner and JD Hartman who will discuss the art of investing in our values. Michael, begin for us, please. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, let me just um, share the screen with you. And um, I don't have a lot of time, but uh, you know we have a long history of the United Way, so I wanna run through this as quickly as I possibly can. And then um, I'm hoping after John has a chance to speak a bit, will be able to engage in a little Q&A. So let me start with an intro. Uh, the goal of this presentation is to explain how our United Way invests its resources to favorably impact the community and improve quality of life and sustainability. Um, I'm going to highlight our unique role as a funder, a convener, and also an incubator for solutions built on broad and uh, uh, partnerships. This is intended to help you appreciate our value in the community beyond a traditional fundraising role. 
And three questions you may want to just put in the top of your mind for future consideration. What will surprise you during this presentation? Uh, what do you want to learn more about? And uh, where do your priorities overlap with the work that we're doing in the community? So, uh, I'm not sure why I can't get to my next slide. That's weird. <laughs> Leah, can you help perhaps? Here, it's not allowing me to, there we go. Okay, we thank go. you. Uh, so here's uh, the first uh, big picture I'd like you to have. Our United Way was founded over 105 years ago on the principle that we are stronger together than we are alone. And the United Way was started, this will interest many of you, as the joint charities campaign led by none other than Ansley Wilcox, a, a lawyer, major philanthropist in West New York uh, many years ago to raise funds during World War I. Uh, we serve both Buffalo and Erie County and are part of a global network of local United Ways uh, under the membership a rubric of United Way Worldwide, which has a history that dates back 135 years. Uh, there are a thousand local United Ways in the United States, and there are over 30 countries that have United Ways as well. Our local United Way is independent, not-for-profit, um, and funds raised here stay in this community. And the United Way Worldwide gives us access to the brand and a wealth of technical assistance in addition to their worldwide recognition as one of the largest public charities in the world. Okay, just uh, briefly on a mission, um, and this was um, uh, shared with you when Dennis made some opening remarks. Uh, the motto, we are stronger and more successful together than we are alone, help form our mission today. The mission feeds into our vision of the future and uh, guiding this work are our core values, which you see on the right-hand side of the slide. And two of the newest um, values that should not surprise the audience are agility and also equity. <clears throat> this is um, the starting point for how I plan on going through our presentation. These are the top line things that United Way is known for. We do research, we influence public policy, we address areas of greatest need, we strengthen the not-for-profit sector and we promote community engagement and we make uh, uh, giving easy. Um, we're more than a fundraising organization, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, this is what the messaging is that is most important. And you see on the right-hand side, health, education, financial stability, um, we fight for, for every person in our community uh, with a focus on healthy babies and children, early learning and development and financial well-being. Uh, these are the community impact cornerstones that directly correlate with quality of life and long-term sustainability. And the work that we do includes, and I'll cover many of these topics in a little bit more detail, we lead coalitions, we make strategic investments in the not-for-profit sector, uh, we secure and administer local, state, and federal grants, we influence public policy through our advocacy efforts, we promote community engagement, and we strengthen the not-for-profit sector. So the first few slides here um, really talk about the community impact work focus that I mentioned earlier. Uh, research and data helps drive the priorities that we establish. You can see from the problem statement uh, at the very top, uh, in Erie County, we have some of the highest premature birth rates in all of New York State, with one third of infant deaths being attributed to premature births. Um, and for the first time in our history, children are predicted to have shorter lifespans than their parents. That one caught my attention. Um, we do research. You could see two publications. We call um, these uh, research documents um, or report cards. We've done them in improving birth outcomes and reducing childhood obesity um, are two examples. And those are available on our website, uwbec.org. And our service focus is on maternal health, healthy eating and exercise and access to health and safety programs like child protective services and family violence as, as an example. Um, last year, over 33,000 individuals took steps to improve their health through community impact investment programs that we're funding, like Go Buffalo Mom, Child Advocacy Center, the Coordinated Approach to Child Health, and the list goes on. And the coalition work that we are engaged in includes Healthy Start, Healthy Futures for All. Uh, we're very uh, proud of the work that this uh, coalition does. Um, it's led by Steve Turkovich as our chair of the committee. Um, he's medical director at Oshai. And um, 
they have helped us move the needle in a positive direction. And our advocacy focus, you could see, uh, shouldn't surprise you, things like child care subsidies, safety net assistance program, Affordable Care Act, these are all high priorities in, in the platform around health. The next uh, area of focus for us is in early learning and development, um, particularly as it relates to uh, early childhood uh, development and education. The problem statement um, that I always use, I always like to highlight is that only a third of third graders are proficient in reading and math in our community, and five in 10 toddlers are not read to on a regular basis. Given the research, our focus is on high quality early learning, parental supports, and uh, supporting community school models. The service focus that we have is on early childhood learning, third grade proficiency, parental engagement and supports and community schools, including after school instruction. Last year, over 30,000 young uh, children and students uh, were equipped to succeed in school and over 1,500 parents benefited uh, through community investment programs like um, I refer to as BLTs, Born Learning Trails, which are interactive signs that offer fun and active learning activities for youth. Uh, you could find those in parks and community centers uh, throughout Erie County. Uh, the, the Buffalo Outer Harbor and the Westside Community Services are two examples. We're working on doing one in that urban uh, center as well. Um, West New York Girls in Sports, the Parent Child Home Visiting Program, which is a reading program that helps parents engage young children in reading. Uh, it's an evidence-based program and uh, providing parental supports and supporting full service community schools. The coalition work we do in this area is called Birth to Eight. We have 33 organizations that meet regularly to discuss needs in the community, evidence-based programs, and ways of addressing systemic change to uh, generate better outcomes against the problems that I mentioned earlier. And some of the advocacy work you can see here shouldn't surprise you either. Child care subsidies, child care tax credit, full service community schools, and our 211 West New York program, which is a 24 uh, seven day a week uh, hotline for health and human services that's available for non emergency uh, situations. And finally, um, we have the financial uh, well being and financial stability platform. Um, some of the data you'll see here through report cards that we've issued as well on financial hardship and our ALICE report, ALICE standing for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, Employed. Um, the problem statement in our community are things like over 57%, uh, I'm sorry, it was 64% of jobs in Western New York pay less than $20 an hour. Think about that. And 50% of uh, households cannot afford their rent. Um, in Erie County, uh, when you combine the poverty rate federal poverty rate, rate of 13%, along with the Alice families, 27% of individuals and families are working poor. That's 40% of families are uh, challenged financially in our community. Uh, given the research, we're working on building and supporting a strong workforce uh, and providing financial capability and asset building services. And our service focus shouldn't be a surprise to you. It includes financial literacy services, safe, affordable housing, vocational training, and employment services and tax assistance. Uh, last year, over 12,000 individuals received tools to improve their finances, access training opportunities, obtain employment, and become more self-reliant through the community impact work uh, involved in um, the United Way, including United Way Works, our VITA program, uh, Work Life Solutions, and the list goes on. Uh, and uh, our coalition work here is around cash, creating asset savings and, and hope, this is a program uh, coalition that we're reconstituting currently, and uh, they've provided great advice and counsel over the years. And the advocacy focus you could see there as well, uh, child care tax credits, the VITA program, tax reform, earned income tax credits. Let me move on to uh, an area of focus that is also important near dear to us, is how we strengthen the not-for-profit sector. The volunteer opportunities um, like this, um, uh, support in many ways the, the important work that we're doing. But let me start with um, the uh, work around um, incubating programs, the COVID response, uh, the community impact work that we're doing. These are all uh, very important areas uh, of uh, opportunity for us. United Way does capacity building for the nonprofit sector. We provide training opportunities in such areas as SIGMA, leadership development, sexual harassment, advocacy, cultural competency, the list goes on. 
Uh, you can see some of the programs that we've incubated. They started out under the umbrella of the United Way, uh, but now they're freestanding not for profits. We're very proud of that. Uh, the only uh, exception would be the Child Advocacy Center, which operates under Best Set. Uh, we manage in-kind donations on behalf of our business partners. Um, and we also manage a weekly newsletter that goes out to uh, thousands of recipients, including the not-for-profit sector, uh, highlighting uh, special events, job opportunities, training opportunities, and the list goes on. I mentioned 211 earlier. And uh, finally, over the last uh, two years, we've partnered with the philanthropic community and other key partners and in response to COVID-19, fundraising, mass distribution, surveying the nonprofit sector around their challenges and opportunities, mobilizing volunteers, and the list goes on. Uh, next, we have community engagement. Um, as you know, we promote community engagement very actively. Um, we create opportunities through volunteer engagement like Business Meets Community, uh, Day of Caring, which has now moved to Summer of Caring, and we're doing some of that virtually, Family Volunteer Day, the list goes on. Volunteer opportunities like this support a service learning element. They benefit the nonprofit sector and its customers, and as research indicates, they're fun and personally rewarding. We also provide board leadership training uh, and in partnership with the Service Collaborative, we manage volunteerwny.org. That's an online volunteer service portal for individuals and not-for-profits interested in giving back to the community's volunteer service. We do service to go projects like sandwich prep, handmade greeting cards, birthday in a bag, healthy snack bags, uh, all in partnership with business sector partners and the not-for-profits. And we are excited about that work. And finally, and most recently, some of you may know, we just started a new venture in partnership with Oshai Children's Hospital. It's called Over the Edge. For those of you who like to repel, um, we've done a repelling event last October down M&T Plaza. We generated over $250,000 in fundraising assets was split between Oshai and the United Way. And it was just a fun event. We had a lot of notoriety around that one. Uh, giving communities, very quickly, uh, we manage several giving communities or affinity groups, uh, which are extremely popular and a great way to cultivate relationships and enhance donor engagement. Next Generation United and Women United are just two examples. Uh, I wanted to highlight some of the work we're doing in the equity area. Uh, you may have heard of, of our 21-day racial equity challenge, um, and uh, that challenge is a portal. It's an online portal that individuals have access to throughout the year to learn more about equity. And, and we've also done um, the creation of a special um, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee that includes individuals and community leaders experienced in this area. We think that that's gonna uh, really help us move the needle uh, as well. We've made bylaw changes uh, as well that will focus on expanding racial equity training for our staff as well as our board, embedding racial equity as one of our criteria for the allocation of funding to the not-for-profit sector moving forward and embracing public testimony on opposition uh, to racism as well. So a lot of work has been going on here and we're really proud of that work and it aligns nicely with the strategic plan. Uh, finally, um, we make fundraising easy. Um, and some of the ways we do that, and I would start by saying no gift is too small. There are a variety of ways to give, including but not limited to online giving. Uh, workplace payroll deduction, corporate giving, sponsorship, and the list goes on. We also have a thriving endowment and planned giving program. Seven years ago, we were at $900,000. Today, we're over $17 million as well. And I always like to highlight what your dollar buys. Um, it's a powerful element of fundraising. And the example I always give is that first one or the second one where $2 will be given to the United Way or $104 a year. It actually buys a book a month for five children, low-income households throughout the year to help them improve their reading skills and early childhood development. Unfortunately, giving trends have changed in light of the pandemic and our campaign has experienced two consecutive years of fundraising declines as a result, and we're looking to turn that around. In closing, from an investment and sustainability standpoint, um, I would add the importance of innovation, social justice, uh, DEI and data analytics cannot be understated. And the United Way's focus on quality of life means an expectation that we are addressing social determinants of health, including disparities and risk factors in our community. And while there remains a lot to do in this area, our new strategic plan and recently uh, revised request for proposal community impact process is a step in the right direction. 
thank you for this opportunity to present on the work of the United Way and I can give it back to Dennis and John. Hey, Michael, you did it. <laughs> you covered a lot of territory in, um, in, a, in a short while. Folks, we encourage you to uh, uh, keep this conversation going. Uh, send some any questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, Leah will uh, uh, record those and so note them. In the meantime, JD, uh, what, what uh, thoughts go through your mind given this presentation and the awareness of the tremendous investment uh, that the community makes through the leadership of the United Way? Yeah, thanks, Dennis. And thank you, Michael. Um, you asked, uh, and we keep three things top of mind as you presented it. I think one of them was how your work might align or overlap with my own personal values. Uh, I only wish my you know, personal activities could keep pace with the United Way. That was pretty impressive. And thanks for all the, the good work. Um, you know, I'm an investment guy and I, I specialize in sustainable and responsible investing. And near the end of your uh, presentation, you mentioned your endowment and how well it had you know, done over the last whatever decade, up to $17 million. Is there any conversation uh, among staff, board, investment committees or otherwise uh, about aligning the investments uh, with your organization's values around, you know, it could be environmental, social justice, fair and open governance. Oh, you've, you've muted, Michael. Michael, yeah. There you go. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, yes, great question. Um, we actually have an endowment plan giving committee we do not manage the endowment ourselves. We've decided that the Community Foundation is the, uh, the best product for us and the best partnership for us to invest because they're getting good return on investment and they have a very large portfolio. Uh, our goal is to get to $50 million in our endowment, at which point we can cover our overall admin and administrative costs through the interest earned from that endowment that in turn could then allow every dollar that comes into our organization to go back out. That's the philosophy that we're um, um, uh, applying. And right now, we are not taking money out of that endowment um, to invest in programs other than the interest earned. And that is based on a policy direction of the committee. And I think it's a sound direction for us to take until we could build uh, a platform and a, and a robust uh, resource base so that we can start making targeted investments where the opportunity is the greatest. And I see that coming over time, we're just not there yet. Um, but a lot of promise here, because when I first started, we hardly had an endowment. And now celebrating a hundred year history five years ago, uh, the centennial celebration really boosted uh, the amount of money coming into the endowment. And we need to continue to build that endowment moving forward. Thank you. Um, you know, so in, in my work uh, in evaluating companies, you know, obviously all the same rigorous financial analysis, but then we also uh, include analysis around uh, diversity. You mentioned diversity, equity, inclusion, very important part of your, your pro programmatic investments. Um, but I, I look at a company's, where's, how's the diversity at the board level? Because you know, if you don't have a diverse board, you ultimately you're going to wind up in a in, oh, a, in a group great thing. And and so, what about your board? If I were analyzing great. United Ways and investment, I want to know how diverse your board is. Uh, that's a fantastic question, and I am very proud of the work that we have done from a governance standpoint in diversifying our board. Uh, when I first started, a lot of people uh, on our board looked like you and I and Dennis. And that has changed dramatically. There are more women. There are more people of color. We are now moving to have more younger professionals uh, that are on our board as well. And if you go to the list uh, on our website, take a look at the people that you'll see. And uh, and one of the things that we also do that I think may be a common practice of other uh, not-for-profits, we ask our board to chair our committees. We actually operate internally eight different committees, community impact, advocacy, health, uh, uh, HR, finance, endowment, and so on, there is usually, there will be a board member that will be a chair or a co-chair for any of those committees as well. So it, and diversity, equity, inclusion committee is a perfect example. Kendra Brim um, is uh, our uh, chair of that committee. 
newly established committee we draw from the board and she's provided very strong leadership as we move the needle in this direction. Good Great. question. Great. Yeah, Leah, I'll check uh, with you. Are any questions coming from the attendees? We do not have any questions. All right, remember folks, you can type it in the chat and Leah will forward it on to Michael or me if the, or Dennis if there are any questions. Dennis, anything on your mind after listening to uh, Michael's well, presentation? I, I, I wanna build off of what you were saying because uh, uh, Michael, you had mentioned how many United Ways are there? Uh, I, I thought I'd heard a thousand. Uh, how many countries you're in? And uh, is, is that approximately correct? I mean, just in the United States, roughly. Uh, Michael, your sound is off. Here we go, unmuted. Um, absolutely. Actually, when I started 13 years ago, there were... Uh, um, now 1,300 United Ways in the United States. What's what tr a trend that's starting to happen, which I fully endorse, more United Ways are coming together and they're merging and consolidating. And I think that that's good for our business model uh, because there are a lot of very small local United Ways that struggle um, and they could be um, continue their mission and continue to serve their community if they were under the umbrella of an organization that could do back office supports on their behalf. It's a more efficient model. Um, I've been advocating for my Western New York colleagues. I, I meet with them. I convene them every quarter. We have conversations about best practices. We talk about and collaborate on things that we could do to help each other. Sometimes we share some services and supports. But ultimately, my vision of the future would be those seven local United Ways in Western New York coming together under the umbrella of a single organization, how exciting that would be, how more cost efficient that would be, and how much more aligned the, the messaging would be because we sometimes work with some of the same business partners across the community. Um, so that's something that we always wanna keep an eye on because the number of not-for-profits from a sustainability standpoint, the number of not-for-profits in Erie County alone, certified by the Attorney General's office Hopefully everybody's sitting down, but it's over 7,000. Think about that. Here he's seven thousand seven seven thousand five hundred one c three organization. Now that's everything from a mom and pop soccer club to People Inc., which is the largest not for profit in West New York. But is there any opportunity for those organizations to even come further together through collaboration, uh, through convening, through? merges and consolidations in a way that will allow them to continue their mission, but do it in a more cost-effective way. I think that needs to be part of that sustainability conversation moving forward. And you're starting to see that in our backyard. And I'm hoping that that continues uh, to be the trend. And that's what happened with the United Way membership when it went from 1,300 10 years ago down to 1,000. And uh, it still remains one of the largest public charities in the world, United Way Worldwide. It's huge. That, that's a big number. I want to make sure I've got that right. 7,000. What's the geography again in Western New York or New York that, State? That's, that's great. That's Erie County alone. Erie County? That's Erie County alone. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I, I think you've identified an interesting situation for future yeah. discussion. Uh, uh, you would also mention the diversity, um, equity, and inclusion and how you're, you're – uh, looking for that in the things that you invest in as uh, literally uh, with your uh, with proceeds from the United Way. So my question would be, can you imagine, since this is about changing, uh, imagine creating a culture of sustainability, if all of those United Ways, uh, the existing, whether they merge or whether they uh, yeah. stay as they are, if they just ask their uh, investment advisors, uh, yeah to uh, tell them how their current investments are faring in some measurements. The risk, uh, these ESG uh, measurements are really <laughs> risk monitors yes. for better understanding the, the risk of your investments relative to governance and, and um, the, the diversity and inclusion and whatnot. Um, so let me give you an example, Dennis, real quickly, because I know we're gonna run out of time. Um, based on our bylaw changes, we actually introduced some new criteria to our recently rolled out RFP, uh, which we do every two years. Those three indicators won't surprise you. But we wanted to know from the applicants what their percentage of service to citizens was in 16 targeted zip codes where they're classified as marginalized communities. 
Second criteria, we wanted to know the percentage of customers that were being served that were people of color. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, this Alice rubric that we're looking at, we don't, we, when I used to work in government, it was all about families who lived under the federal poverty level. Well, the reality is there's a significant percentage as well of families that are disrupted but are working. They're working poor families, Alice. And so one of the things we asked our applicants, tell us what percentage of families that are Alice classified are you serving as well? And we actually scored that in addition to other metrics to come up with um, our, our decision-making process, to help our decision-making process. So if that gives you an indication that we're moving the needle with much more consciousness around diversity, equity, and inclusion, I think that says a lot. I, well, it certainly does. And, and to the degree that I'm sure the, there's an association of United Ways, and to the degree that the best practices start happening right here in Buffalo, uh, those will be shared, I'm sure, with um, uh, others in the country. So you're certainly helping create a culture of sustainability and awareness. That's the important thing. Leah, did we get any other questions? Yeah, we have two more questions that I'm hoping Good. we can get to quickly. Um, the first is, what is the best way for other local nonprofits to learn about partnering or applying for grants? Great question, Leah. Um, and I don't know if we could post it on this site here, but if you just go to uwbec.org, that's our website. And you'll be able to navigate the section under not for profit and you'll see our RFP that uh, unfortunately we've closed out our RFP for this cycle. We've already made decisions, but that doesn't mean we can't start conversations with not for profits to learn more about what their interests are, how it aligns with our goals and objectives, and what maybe future opportunities uh, may come forward. So that's uwbec.org. Great. Um, the second question is. Does JD have recommendations for nonprofits that are looking to cultivate and grow their capital investments while staying true to their mission and balancing asset building with the demands of using dollars for the mission? Yeah, good question. And the answer is yes, there are nonprofits that um, align their investments, such as their endowments, uh, with their own personal as well as organizational value. So I sit on the investment committee of St. Vincent de Paul, and they do as well, uh, the West New York Land Conservancy. But if, if anyone were interested in talking about it more specifically to then, yes, there are uh, organizations that align their investment values with their organizational values. Give me, give me a call, contact me. If, uh, I, I love talking about it, so thank you. <laughs> I don't know if that answers the question. I can't get too de detailed because, you know, it is confidential information. J.D., uh, mention uh, the, the person we had uh, at the end of November yeah. uh, that you had brought yeah. in as a speaker because that's yeah. a great, that's on the library's uh, 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 the site that uh, is yeah. archiving yeah. all of these programs. Yeah. And I think I recommend anybody who's interested in the subject to look at that. Tell us about the, the yeah. person and... Yeah. Yeah, that's good. If, if, if whoever asked the question or anyone else wants a little deeper dive into that subject matter, maybe back a month or two ago, it's on the library website. It's Bill Davis of Stance Capital. And uh, he is, he is a, a, a gentleman who is a, a renowned money manager, billions of dollars. And he uses environmental criteria uh, social justice criteria and fair and open governance criteria in analyzing uh, companies to invest in. You know, all the same financial rigor uh, and analysis that goes into any selection, but then these other three filters. And the, the numbers are showing that in fact, uh, the performance of such companies are better over time. Just like I would imagine the performance of the United Way is, is better over time with a diverse board and so on and so forth. So anyway. Well, that was the end of November. It, we had five Tuesdays in November. That's why I remember scheduling it. Time and uh, it, 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 uh, it does. And it's really a great primer. And it was designed as an educational piece about what is sustainable investing ESG in the current, it gave the history of it uh, going back to the 1980s. So uh, uh, folks can check that out. Does that uh, wrap it up for us, Leah? I believe so. Well, that's uh, that's good. Then we will, I can simply uh, 
say, Michael, you did a great job. Uh, you, you got us to where we need to be uh, on this subject. And, and, um, and I always like to read the biographies of the talented people that exist in our midst. Uh, and that's why I, I uh, uh, add that to the archive record. So thank you. And JD, thanks for co-hosting this series as you do and, and um, um, uh, continuing on. We'll, uh, I think our next one is in May that we'll have five Tuesdays. So yeah. Um, and, and Dennis, we have uh, just a little promo for that. We have uh, the chief sustainability officer of Rich Products. So it should be a really interesting show. Please join us. Uh, that we'll look forward to that then, no, uh, the end of May. All right, folks, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we hope to see you back here again next Tuesday, April 5th on Zoom, as we're joined by Barry Zeiger and J. Jean Rose Birney mm -hmm. of the Western New York Land Conservancy. They're going to discuss a, an interesting project they're working on jointly uh, in the East Aurora area. The title is Plant the Future of Farming. Uh, so find out more about that by tuning in next week. I'm Dennis Galucky. Uh, be well and good day.